Welcome to another edition of G Captain Live. I'm G Captain founder and your host, John Conrad. In today's episode, I wanted to talk a little bit about one of my absolute favorite books and come down to beautiful Morro Bay. Uh, there's the rock in the background. One, because I have a new uh, setup, a uh, smart gimbal. The guys at uh, NY Boat helped me kind of figure out how to do some blogging when I'm out at sea. But also uh, because it's a beautiful day. It's been raining here for the last few days and I wanted to come down to the ocean. Now, last week, uh, last episode, I really told you guys a lot about uh, some of my favorite books. And I have one book in particular I wanted to leave to a separate episode. But one of the questions I got asked after the episode ended was, you know, this question of, well, why, why do you suggest if I'm a tanker captain to read about fishing boats, uh, to read about cruise ships, to read about these different things? Uh, before I get into that, though, I want to make one brief correction. I had talked about my first book, um, Farley Mowat's book when I was really, uh, I hadn't read that, that was new in, but it looks very similar to Nicholas Montserrat's The Cruel Sea. So I apologize, I have not read um, uh, the book that I had showed, but the Nicholas Montserrat book, The Cruel Sea, is the one about World War II uh, that had all of the veterans and the information. So both, both excellent books. Um, anyway, so why do I talk about having a variety of knowledge? You know, what does that fishing boat down here have to do with the Master Unlimited, the guy who is up at sea on a large thousand foot tanker? And the question really relates to creativity, guys. You know, there is nothing new in this world. Nothing new is created on a daily basis. There are no new innovations. We have some technological and some gear things that change over the years, but all that can be learned about the basics of the sea and the seafaring uh, profession could have been learned 50 years ago or 100 years ago. Where What is new and where creativity and what really advances learning. You know, when we work for many years on one type of ship, uh, we often get into a rut. The amount, the level that we learn, that we learn new things, really goes down. In order to kind of jumpstart that learning and creativity in the job, how to become a better mariner, is really a diverse set of ideas, a diverse set of perspectives. So while a book, um, I just finished uh, Spike Walker's about Alaska fishing, um, but, you know, giant crab fishing in Alaska. There's a lot of this stuff doesn't pertain to large ships, and we don't cover enough commercial fishing in G Captain. You know, hopefully we can do more in the future. But, you know, when you have a limited crew size, when you're only talking about three guys, the survival, uh, you know, how you survive an incident, how the crew gets together is vastly different from a ship that might have 24 guys, different problems. So if you were ever in an incident and you had to abandon ship and you got separated from the uh, rest of the ship, that's some information that can help you. It, just the perspective and how, you know, storms and... So that all comes from this book, guys. And it's a friend of mine Robert Greene has this book, Mastery. So there are hundreds of books that can help your career. There are countless books for ship captains and guys wanting to go out to sea for a career. But very few tell you how to be a captain. Most of them tell you what to do when, how to avoid mistakes, you know, not putting the ship on the rocks. And um, many tell you, sorry, I want to go down to the pier here and get a view of the water. Many tell you what to do after you have mistakes, uh, how to kind of recover from them. And then there are some that give you basics on 
leadership and crew training, but very few go into you know what it takes to be a shipmaster, what it takes to learn the knowledge, not just about the job. There are countless technical manuals and things that can teach you about the various radar systems and the management systems. I'm talking what it takes to learn the craft, the trade of the seafarer. And this book, written by a friend of mine, Robert Green, is called Mastery. He spent, uh, I think, three to five years working on this book after his bestsellers uh, book, The 48 Laws of Power, which I had talked about last time. But in this book, it's not about ships. It's about people who are at the top of their profession and what it takes to get there. Now, we had well, probably the most popular episode we've had on this um, live show so far is the episode of relating to millennials. And there was a lot of questions on, hey, these guys are young. They want to succeed really early. They want to jump right into the job. But we as ship cams, we've been hired because we get the job done. We don't have as much time for training anymore. We have limited crew and we really need guys who have initiative and get the job done. Um, so how do you balance those perspectives? And then, you know, a lot of the young guys say, you know, they're curious to learn, they're curious to, to jump in there, but they also want to prove themselves. Well, that can be um, debilitating, as Robert Greene talks about in his book here, Mastery. The, there are three steps to initially gaining the foundation of your career. And step one is observation. So how do you observe as a, you know, as a cadet or a third mate? How do you go on and make sure you're getting the best experience there? And he, he does really what he calls step one, deep observation. And he calls it the passive mode. And what all these are steps that have been, you know, taken by a lot of masters, guys who have gotten into the tops of their career, they all start with a passive mode, deep observation. And he says here, first you will observe the rules and procedures that govern success in the environment. In other words, this is how we do things here. Some of these rules will be communicated to you directly, generally the ones that are superficial and largely a matter of common sense. You must pay attention to these, but what is more interest are the rules that are unstated and are part of the underlying work culture. So we, we, always, we all know the guy who out on the ship, you know, the new crew member who goes, oh, back on my ship, we did it this way. What's really important is to learn the new ways. And if you are constantly doing it one way, even if your way is better, you're not learning the way of the ship. When I you know, as chief mate and master on vessels. When I got onto a new ship, you know, there was always the question, what's John gonna come in? What's he gonna change? And I made changes, I made significant changes, but I had a basic rule. I wouldn't change anything substantial for six months. The first six months um, would be spent observing how they do it. How does this ship do it? Because often you go in there and you want to make a change and you make the difference and you don't realize that that change affects so many other th pieces of the puzzle. So Robert Greene talks about deep observation and that's in part getting past your ego, but it's also in part in how do you take notes and observe the uh, mariners around you. So again, these are practical step-by-step -step techniques for reaching the pinnacle of your career. Um, and then as we go past uh, the apprenticeship, the next part is the skills acquisition, all right? Actually learning the skills that it takes to drive a ship or a boat, uh, followed by experimentation. Now that's a critical rule, but that's one that often gets uh, experienced mariners uh, in trouble. You know, they did a uh, study on ship incidents and they found that it wasn't the young masters who had the highest number of incidents. It was the masters 
who had a lot of experience, but on routine runs, doing the same run time and time again. And what happened is they were um, trying, you know, they'd done the same thing years and years, for many years, and found that it was safe, but it was boring, and they wanted to try something new. So a big question in this book is how do you experiment and do it safely, do it within the you know, in a secure, safe environment, but still practice that experimentation. There are a lot more things in this book that are just phenomenal, guys. But this, again, is a how-to manual, how to push your career and push yourself to really um, succeed. And a big part of this book is, and if you know Robert Greene, if you've read 48 Laws of Power, he really looks at the social dynamic, what he calls social intelligence, finding out what drives and motivates individual people. How do you get that AB um, who just doesn't want to work, doesn't want to be there, doesn't want to contribute to the team? How do you get him engaged and active? And how do you find out who is secretly trying to stab you in the back? Another big part of this book is Figuring out, is this really the thing that drives you? You know, because this is a hard life, guys. That sea out there is, is really dangerous. Um, if you've been in a storm, as most of you have been, you know, if I never see another major storm again in my life, I might, might die happy. It's miserable out there in the horrible conditions. But then you have days like this where where else would you rather be? But we all have different things that motivate us, that, that give us passion. And how do you find that passion? Is the life of a sailor really something that is worth the investment? Or is it something that um, is going to, i just interested in now and may fade away later? And when you guys, if you're already in the uh, marine thing, are you are tankers really serving your interest or were you more of a cruise ship guy or would you be happier on a fishing boat these are all questions that he has very practical step-by-step -step means of answering these questions how do you find what you can be passionate in because without the curiosity guys without the passion when we lose that drive, we're not learning. And when we're not learning, we're not advancing. And as I said in the veteran episode, the importance of this, guys, the importance of this, why it's important to love your job and to do the best work. All right. I've, my next book is on stoic philosophy. Guys who really spend a lot of time thinking, you know, what's the meaning of life and, and how do I make the most out of life? But... Uh, the fact is we only have one life here time is limited and whether you believe you know that you are uh, in the Bible or you believe in the Torah or you're Muslim or Hindu whatever your beliefs are on the afterlife even if I go to heaven even if I succeed afterwards this is my only time here in this body in this world and we really have to make the most of it. To go out there in such a hard profession and not love it, not be passionate about it, not try to succeed, is just wasting your time. And there is an abundance of everything in this world, guys. There are so many jobs where you can, and opportunities to make money. There are so many super intelligent people in this world. There is an abundance of every single category of item, and resource in this world but what we don't have an unlimited supply of is time time is ticking and unless you're out there engaged passionate learning advancing yourself you're really squandering this one opportunity you have regardless of your religious beliefs your one opportunity in this body on this place on this ocean to really enjoy life and live it to the fullest. So unfortunately, um, because I'm doing this mobile setup, I don't have access to comments. I don't know if you guys have been commenting. I don't know if the audio has been working or the video, but I wanted to share this. And again, mastery, you know, there are tons and tons of books that tell you how to do the technical aspects of the ship captain and the leadership and the regulations. But how do you, how do you become a good ship captain? 
How do you observe and make the most out of your limited time here? How do you find a mentor? That's another big part of this book. How do you realizing you can't do it alone and finding a mentor who can really, and I don't care what stage you are, I need a mentor. Ship cams need a mentor. Chief engineers need a mentor to help push us to that next level. There's a whole chapter on mentorship, how to find a mentor, how to evaluate that mentor, how to work with them. So many great tips. I can't go over them all in this video, but I wanted to share with you. Again, this has been G Captain Live, episode 19. I'm John Conrad, G Captain CEO and founder, and thank you for joining us today.